Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled, Is Planet X a Black Hole? Now, the Planet X system is made of energy depleted or dead stars, which I have named stellar cores, as they share their outer layers of material until their solid core, the densest part of the object, is exposed. This shows that there is not much difference between a star and a planet, as they both have solid cores, solid surfaces, and atmospheres. Stars emit light from their atmospheres, as do planets, in the form of lightning, except that stars have extremely high potentials across their atmospheres, which places this gaseous outer layer in plasma arc mode. And you may look at Article 232 entitled, The Sun Can Go Dark, The Implications, for more details. These objects seem to have started invading our solar system some 170 years ago. And you may look at Article 146 entitled, Planet X System, Time of Arrival, for more details on that. They have been drawing energy from the Sun, and as a result, the Sun is dying. And you may look at Article 195, entitled Stellar Cores and the Dying Sun. They have also filled the solar system with debris, which is profoundly affecting our planet. These effects are causing the planet to heat up, expand, and therefore fissure. In addition, earthquake and volcanic activity continues to increase. And you may look at Article 282 entitled The Earth in Upheaval, Magma Rising, and Article 297 entitled Town in Peru Destroyed as Earth's Surface Breaks Up Due to Planet X. Now here we see one of these stellar cores, and it is moving through the sun's outer corona. Uh, you can see that this is um, a Lasco C2 image, and from the occulter um, and this white circle on the occulter, we can see how large the sun uh, actually is. This object has to be very close to the sun because, first of all, we always find these objects very close to the sun. We can see some of the debris that's either moving with the object or is in front of the object. This debris is always, always found very close to the sun because this is where they shared uh, the outer layers of material. And if we compare this object with the size of the sun, uh, as represented by this uh, white circle, uh, we can see the object seems to be about one-third of the size of the Sun. So these are huge objects, and there are, of course, some that are much larger than the Sun. Now, in a recent article, I mentioned that stellar cores are energy black holes, which may have confused some people because I have stated several times that black holes do not exist. What I meant is that stellar cores are voracious absorbers of energy in the form of light or photons, and thus absorb all photon energy that they come across. The term black hole usually refers to an object that has collapsed gravitationally to the point that its gravity is so extremely strong that nothing is able to escape, not even light, once close to the object. However, as I have shown in many previous articles, gravitational collapse does not occur in stars. We know this because of the huge size of some of the stellar cores that have been observed in the inner solar system, which should have turned into black holes at the end of their lives, but obviously did not. And you may look at Article 321 entitled Huge Planet X Star in the inner solar system for more details. And this is one of these extremely large objects. This is in the Lasco C2 image from 2014 and sent to me by Arwain Steiger. The sun seems to be reacting to its presence. Um, and it seems to be issuing a large amou amount of extremely bright plasma in its direction. And we can even see some of this plasma draping across the surface of the object, so uh, a, somewhat in front of the object, to the point that we can say uh, with uh, confidence that this object has to be extremely close to the sun. And if that's the case, a comparison with 
the sun size as given by this white circle on the occulter means that the object would be about seven times larger than the sun. So it's extremely large. So instead of becoming high gravity objects, stars become low gravity objects at the end of their lifetimes or once they are no longer able to generate energy in their cores. All stars therefore become brown dwarfs, at which time they are already energy depleted. Brown dwarfs are not substellar objects. They are stars of different sizes, but the characteristic striped appearance a star develops as it moves into the brown dwarf stage is because it continues to have a strong magnetic field after its energy generation ability drops so that it is no longer able to have a large enough gravitational influence to create a large enough electric field or electric potential in its outer layers, which would allow it to emit radiation from its atmosphere. Atmosphere. Once the star is no longer able to emit radiation from its atmosphere, it emits infrared radiation which comes from its core's remaining ability to generate energy. Once this energy is completely exhausted, the star emits no radiation at all and thus becomes a black dwarf. So a star's gravitational influence and electric field decline in old age, but its magnetic field comes from the alignment of metallic elements like iron in its solid core, which is not dramatically affected by the object's energy depleted state. An object's magnetic field causes the object's outer layers to conform to the toroidal symmetry of that magnetic field, leading to different circulation bands around its magnetic axis, which then give it a striped appearance. These are there even when a star is still emitting huge amounts of radiation, but they only become visible as different bands once the star stops emitting visible light. As a star's energy becomes increasingly depleted, its gravitational influence decreases. This causes the star to expand. Its surface features and its surface layers are then shed as the object is no longer able to hold on to its surface layers. These layers turn into debris which float around the object and is often observed in close proximity to the sun, as I showed you in figure 1. This material is so low in energy that it has no gravitational influence, nor can it respond to another object's gravitational influence. For more details, you may look at article 210 entitled Stellar Core Gravity, tidal and g is not constant but its low energy turns the object into an energy absorber from whatever object it encounters that has more photon energy in its particles than this object has and this illustrates what actually occurs because just as heat flows from a hot you have a hot and a cold object uh, to a cold object, energy flows from the sun, which has more energy than stellar cores, to a stellar core. Thus, more energy reaches the surface of the sun, which causes it to become hot or more active on the surface at the point where this contact is made. Black holes are often described as being able to absorb other stars that come close to them due to their extremely strong gravitational pull. Stellar cores have the ability to also destroy other stars and in this way are similar to black holes, but the process is different. Stellar cores do it through absorbing energy which is associated to a star's gravitational influence, whilst the black holes, as described by the current astrophysical theorists, do it with their high gravity, so directly from gravity. Because of this energy absorption ability, the planet X system of stellar cores will absorb all the gravitational photon energy available from a star system once they invade it until the stars and the planets turn into energy depleted objects or stellar cores themselves. These new stellar cores will then be assimilated into the planet X system, which will then move on to the next living star system. And you may look at article 244 entitled The Planet X System Destroyer 
of star systems. Thus, these objects are able to destroy and absorb the energy of other stars, and this is what they are doing to our Sun. Now, even though the objects that we have observed have dense cores, it is likely that if one of these objects does not find a living star from which to absorb energy, that its energy reservoir will continue to decline until its gravity is so low that even the core starts to break up and the entire object turns into dust. This therefore suggests what will be the end of the universe if it is allowed to continue on its current evolutionary path. Once all matter in the universe becomes depleted in energy, all matter will turn into dust or debris pieces with zero gravitational influence. So here we see a galaxy. Now a galaxy emits light because galaxies are populated with hundreds of millions of stars. But eventually all these stars will run out of energy, stop emitting light and turn into stellar cores, which can be described as uh, zombie stars or energy black holes as they absorb energy from other living stars and eventually destroy them. Ultimately, all stars and even the galactic nucleus will run out of energy and the galaxy will therefore turn into a, coal, a cloud of dark, cold dust with zero gravitational influence. So in conclusion, accepted astrophysical theory type black holes have extreme gravity and destroy other stars through it. These objects cannot, however, exist. Real stars turn into energy-depleted objects or stellar cores, which have very low gravitational influence, but which turns them into extreme energy absorbers. This allows them to also destroy other stars or whole stars or even a whole star system through that energy absorption ability. And they can thus be described as energy black holes. The evolution of stars into energy depleted objects suggests that the universe, if allowed to continue on its current course, will end up as cold dark dust with zero gravity. And these are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.